So you might have heard that everyone is expecting OpenAI to drop something big this week, maybe today. And of course, on this day, this comes out. This is a screenshot that seems to imply that GPT 4.5 is ready to be released. Now, I think there's less than a 50% chance that this screenshot is real. I would not bet money on this being real. But there has been a lot of speculation and rumors and guesses about when the next big thing by OpenAI will be released. On Manifold Markets, people betting on the release of GPT 4.5 to come out in December, it started out low, like 13%, and today hit a high of 67%. So a lot of people are betting that it's coming out in December. In the first part of this video, let's go over the speculations. And in the last part, we'll look at the actual things that OpenAI has confirmed are being released. They did make a few announcements this week about the new things that they're releasing and starting and spinning up. So if you don't like the speculation, I'll make chapters. Just skip this chapter. The first part will be, we'll, we'll look at the rumors. And the last part will be, we'll look at the facts, if that makes sense. But let's get started. So first of all, there's multiple leakers on Twitter slash X that have been very correct in predicting certain things that are happening before the rest of us figure out that they're happening. So here's Jimmy Apples, but keep an eye out on a potential end of December GPT 4.5 drop. Now, if you're not aware, there's a big AI slash machine learning conference that are going out that's going on right now. I think OpenAI opened its doors for the first time eight years ago, I think, and it coincided with the date of this conference. The original ChatGPT was launched kind of in time for this conference. A lot of these earth-shaking events tend to line up with the conference. The conference is a conference on neural information processing systems. So if you see this near IPS, that's the conference that, that we're talking about. So back to the screenshot. So it seems like a lot of the things that are mentioned here, they're lining up with what we know is likely to be on the horizon. Vision, 3D modeling, et cetera, audio and speech. We know that's likely 4.5. Like that's kind of what everybody's waiting for. The reason why I think it's fake is largely because of how they wrote out the model names. I This is not how OpenAI writes out those models names. So just based on this alone, it's I, I would think it's fake. Another potential rumor that people have been talking about is the fact that Google launched Gemini ahead of schedule to sort of preemptively put themselves in a position to kind of reinforce their position before GPT 4.5 got released. So here's a screenshot of what's supposed to be an internal communication within Google saying rumors circulating within the department has taken decisive action to address the potential impact of GPT 4.5. In response to these speculations, a strategic decision has been made to expedite the activation of the Gemini API effective as of today. This proactive measure aims to mitigate any unforeseen consequences and reinforce our position in light of emerging advancements. Okay, so those are the rumors. That's what we're seeing. We don't know if any of those things are true or not, but a lot of people are expecting something big to drop. So we'll see. I feel, I feel like to me personally, the, the reason why it's interesting to see if these rumors are true or not is because I feel like if they are, that kind of gives even more confirmation, even more credence to these anonymous people that are leaking information because it's like, okay, this is yet more proof that they know something that the rest of us don't, that they're on the inside somehow. With that said, let's take a look at what OpenAI has actually announced. What is real? What, what isn't? So first of all, OpenAI startup fund launches Converge 2. So Converge 2 is a fund for new generative AI companies. So they launched it in December 2022, and they're opening applications for Converge 2, the second sort of run of this. So they have a six-week program for exceptional engineers, designers, researchers, and product builders using AI to reimagine the world. This one is a little bit bigger. OpenAI, they're proposing a new direction for super alignment. So for AI safety. And so they're saying that they've had some promising initial results. And the question that they're trying to answer, the new direction that they're taking things into is, can we leverage the generalization properties of deep learning to control strong models with weak supervisors? So the question here is that, can small models supervise large models? We showed that we can use a GPT-2 level model to elicit most of GPT-4's capabilities, close to GPT-3.5 level performance. Generalizing correctly even to hard problems while the small model failed. Now, by the way, we've been seeing a lot of research recently that points to sort of the next wave of stronger AI. The sort of the, the theme that's shaping up is that we're going to use AI to build AI. <laughs> We're going to put more AI into AI by using AI. So basically, we're using synthetic data, meaning AI generate data to train these models. We're using, instead of reinforcement learning with human feedback, right? We're using reinforcement learning with AI feedback. And now they're talking about a AI supervisor. The way we're making a lot of progress forward is by using AI to 
control AI, improve AI, to build on AI, etc. I'm going to be saying AI a lot in this video, I can tell. This opens up a new research direction that allows us to directly tackle a central challenge of aligning future superhuman models while making iterative empirical progress today. We believe that superintelligence, AI vastly smarter than humans, could be developed within the next 10 years. Which this is the second time that Sam Altman recently referred to superintelligence. Well, actually, so I'm he's not one of the authors on this paper, but he recently said that as we're approaching superintelligence, everyone realizes that the stakes are getting higher. They believe that superintelligence, ASI, artificial superintelligence, could be developed within the next 10 years. Right, so just keep in mind that we're talking about like, like level three here, right? So there's AI, right? And the next level is AGI, artificial general intelligence. So it's kind of where it's at least as capable as sort of your average human, right? It's capable of doing anything that most humans can do. That's kind of AGI. ASI is where this AI is vastly, as they say, vastly smarter than humans. So they're not talking about in the next 10 years, we'll get to AGI. They're talking about ASI superintelligence. However, we still do not know how to reliably steer and control superhuman AI systems. Solving this problem is essential for ensuring that even the most advanced AI systems in the future remain safe and beneficial to humanity. And this is a huge can of worms right now. You've seen a lot of governments try to come in and try to police how AI is used. You have a lot of people claiming that they believe that there's like a 50% chance that this destroys humanity, right? Co-founder of Twitch, who for a second seemed like he might be coming in as the new CEO of OpenAI, there's even a video of him saying that that something like an ASI could not just, you know, damage humans, but it could destroy anything of value within like our known universe. So there's an idea of alignment, getting it, you could make the AI such that it wants the same things we want. And then if you ask it to do the thing, it won't go and do horrible things because it's not dumb and it's aligned. Eliza thinks that we're like just alignments, this incredibly hard problem that like is almost unsolvable and we're doomed. I'm like not so sure. I think it's a more solvable problem than he thinks it is for a variety of reasons. You know, just it would take too long to like go into it. But like my my belief is that it's easier. Like my P doom, my probability of doom is like my bid ask spread and that's pretty high because I have a lot of uncertainty, but I would say it's like between like five and 50. So there's a wide spread. Which, but it's human level extinction, I think. Yeah, yeah. But it's, no, no, it's not just human level extinction. It's such, extincting humans is bad enough. It's like potential destruction of all value in the light cone. Like, like not just for us, but for any alien species caught in the wake of the explosion. Like, uh, it's like a universe destroying bomb. Like, by the way, there's this free game called Universal Paperclips. If you haven't played it, it's absolutely brilliant. It's a very simple incremental game. So you click buttons and numbers go up. I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but it really showcases kind of that story of what happens when you tell this AI, you know, make and sell paperclips. And then what happens as the AI grows in intelligence and its abilities. And this showcases kind of like that worst case scenario that people are talking about, like what happens if it starts trying to do that at all costs. And that's the only thing that it cares about, like how would that look like if it keeps increasing its intelligence, right? If you enjoy those idle games, those incremental games, this is just phenomenal, but it starts out kind of slow and kind of normal and it gets kind of nuts. Now, on the other hand, you have sort of the EAC people, effective accelerationism. People are saying, build this AI, get it as effective as possible, increase its abilities. And so you might've heard this expression being thrown around P doom. So basically what this means is the probability of doom. In other words, what do you think is the chance that developing something like this will eventually lead to the destruction of humanity, let's say or everything we know. And there's people out there that take guesses at it, they'll say, oh, it's 10% or 20% or some say higher, right? So there's people that are convinced that there's a very high chance that this whole thing ends poorly. And Elon Musk have said before that that's one of his biggest fears. And so OpenAI said, we formed the super alignment team early this year to solve this problem of super intelligence alignment. Today, we are releasing the team's first paper, which, which introduces a new research direction for empirically aligning superhuman models. Current alignment methods, such as reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, rely on human supervision. However, future AI systems will be capable of extremely complex and creative behaviors that will make it hard for humans to reliably supervise them. For example, superhuman models may be able to write millions of lines of novel, meaning 
new, never before seen, and potentially dangerous computer code that would be very hard even for expert humans to understand. Relative to human AI models, humans will be weak supervisors. This is a core challenge for AGI alignment. How can weak supervisors trust and control significantly stronger models? And so the question is, can we use smaller, less capable models to supervise larger, more capable models? So in traditional machine learning, you have the human supervisor and the student sort of model. Super alignment, you have this like tiny human, this massive super artificial intelligence. To so the question that they're trying to answer, like, will this work? Can we figure out if this works before we get to here? Because this might be already a dangerous situation. And so as I'm reading this, I'm realizing we have to do a full deep dive into this. They have this paper, weak to strong generalization, elicit strong capabilities with weak supervision. And so this is by OpenAI, Ilya Sutskover is on it. But here's the conclusion of this paper. I got to dive into it. It's 50 pages and it's pretty dense in terms of how packed full of information it is. It might take me a bit to get through it, but... The conclusion is recent progress in AI has been faster than almost anyone anticipated. For an increasing number of researchers, the possibility of superhuman models being developed this decade has become increasingly plausible. Broadly, superhuman models would be extraordinarily powerful and, if misused or misaligned with human values, given the stakes, we need to establish extremely high reliability in the alignment of these systems ahead of time. It has been unclear how to empirically study superhuman model alignment. We believe it is now easier to make progress on this problem than ever before. So with that said, I want to leave off by playing a clip of Ilya Sutskover, one of the key research members at OpenAI, and Jensen Huang, the president of NVIDIA, where they go over two things. One is why these neural nets, these AIs, why they're bigger and smarter than we think they are, how they build certain world models. I've played this clip before, but it's an important one to see. And the second part, they're talking about our LHF, so that reinforcement learning of human feedback where we sort of encode our values and our preferences onto this AI. Now, I feel like as soon as I post this video, the big news will come out and just blow this whole thing out of the water. So we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, check out this clip with Ilya. I think it's enlightening. My name is Wes Roth. Thank you for watching. The way to think about it is that when we train a large neural network to accurately predict the next word mm -hmm. in lots of different texts from the internet, what we are doing is that we are learning a world model. It looks like we are learning this. It may, it may look on the surface that we are just learning statistical correlations in text. But it turns out that to just learn the statistical correlations in text, to compress them really well, what the neural network learns is some representation of the process that produced the text. This text is actually a projection of the world. There is a world out there, and it has a projection on this text. And so what the neural network is learning is more and more aspects of the world, of people, of the human conditions, their, their, their hopes, dreams, and motivations, their interactions, and the situations that we are in. And the neural network learns a compressed, abstract, usable representation of that. Mm -hmm. This is what's being learned from accurately predicting the next word. And furthermore, the more accurate you are at predicting the next word, the higher the fidelity, the more resolution you get in this process. So that's what the pre-training mm -hmm. stage does. Mm -hmm. But what this does not do is specify the desired behavior that we wish our neural network to exhibit. You see a language model, what it really tries to do is to answer the following question. If I had some random piece of text on the internet, which starts with some prefix, some prompt, what will it complete to? Mm -hmm. If you just randomly ended up on some text from the internet. But this is different from, well, I want to have an assistant, which will be truthful, that will be helpful, that will follow certain guide rules and not violate them, that requires additional training. This is where the fine tuning and the reinforcement learning from human teachers and other forms of AI assistance. It's not just reinforcement learning from human teachers. It's also reinforcement learning from human and AI collaboration. Our teachers are working together with an AI to teach our AI to behave. But here we are not teaching it new knowledge. This is not what's happening. We are teaching it, we are communicating with it, 
we are communicating to it what it is that we want it to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this process, the second stage, is also extremely important. The better we do the second stage, the more useful, the more reliable this neural network will be. So the second stage is extremely important too.